Hello again and welcome back to my channel. I thought that it would be helpful to show my coloring process with you and this will go from how do I pick um, coloring pages all the way to knowing which colors I want to use. So um, I thought I would share this with you and start off in Fragile World. Now Usually when I pick a coloring page, it is based on what I feel like coloring at that moment or for that week. It can vary depending on the month that I am in. So I consider myself to be quite mood driven when it comes to picking my coloring pages. However, there are times when I do pick a page and I have quite a clear idea in mind how I want to approach that coloring page and in August I have about three pages where I've known exactly what I want the page to look like and um, I move from there. One of those pages is this axolotl page in Fragile World by Kirby Rosanis and what I've done is I've looked at the double page spread to familiarize myself with um, the layout of the page, what's on the page, um, and I can see I have four axolotls. So from there, I will go into Instagram or Pinterest or even Pixabay, and I will look for inspirational photos. Um, in this case, I found several axolotls on Instagram, and I was able to um, come up with the idea that I wanted to create a light and dark axolotls. Now, axolotls come in various um, shades and, and textures, but their colors are pretty much black or white or a mix of both. So my plan is to do two black axolotls and two white axolotls. And if you're wondering why am I choosing a white and a black on each page, the purpose behind that is to help balance my colors. I want to make sure that whatever color I have on the top, I have somewhere at the bottom. Whatever I have on the one side, I have on the other side. And that helps to create a cohesiveness in my coloring. I then look at um, this beautiful double page spread and know that I color a lot with colored pencils. I also am aware that Kirby Rosanna's books are uh, not single sided, they are double sided with an image on both sides. So this rules out alcohol markers as a base. It will bleed through and I want to color every single page in this book. I don't want bleed through here. I have also looked at various um, YouTube channels and looked at how they've colored in Kirby Rosanna's books. So I am aware that in Kirby Rosanna's books, watercolor works well. Um, I think the amount of water used is still up for question, but let's go ahead and say with um, minimal water, watercolor works well in Kirby Rosanna's books. So I have decided on this double page spread, I am going to use Inktense pencils as my base. Um, I, might, I might use only Inktense pencils for the leaves and the fish, or I might do that with pencil, but I know that I'm using ink tents for my background and as a base. I am also going to be using Prismacolor pencils on top because one, I know Prismacolor pencils work well on this paper based on what other colorists have used. And two, um, I have also heard that polychromos work well. Those are my two main um, coloring pencils I enjoy using. And because my mood is driving my choice of pencils, I am going to be using Prismacolors. So how do I know what colors I am going to use for the leaves, the logs, the rocks, the background? Well, again, I go back to my choice of inspirational photos. Yes, these photos are not in the wild. They are photos done of people's axolotl pets in fish tanks. However, I can use 
that as um, inspiration. So if you look at my pictures, which I'll bring up for you, you can see that I'm going for a brown texture on the log. I am going for green leaves, variety of shades of green leaves, and I'm going to create a blue to a sandy color texture for my background. My rocks I'm going to have with a bit of light brown to pick up from anywhere on the log, as well as some grays, specifically Payne's gray, which has a blue undertone, and that is going to complement the blue in my background. I'm also going to base two of the axolotls in um, a variety of grays and blacks for depth. And that is because if I look up at these black axolotl images here on the screen, you can see that some of the colors on the black axolotls are 50% uh, cool gray, some warm gray, and maybe a little bit of the 90% grays and some black for definition. If you look on some of the feelers on the black axolotls, as in this image, you can see that there are some red tinges on the frills of the um, axolotl. So if I want to, I can add some reddish colors. So colors like mahogany red would work well in this case. It also comes with understanding and knowing your colors. For this, I also use very close me, my, closely my color chart and my color chart helps me to pick as many colors as I can to match what I'm seeing in these photos. So if we pull up the white axolotl page up here, the picture I'm using for inspiration, and we open up my swatch book to where I have my Prisma colors, I can see that one, I need my white pencil, PC1018 pink rose, because there's some very, very light pink on these uh, white axolotls. I'm also going to need some darker pinks, so I'm choosing PC929 pink. And for shadows, I'm going to go for a bit of raspberry. And that is just to help define and deepen up the pink sections of the white axolotl. There are several other colors I may pull in and choose, but that is the base. I'm using my inspirational photo, my swatch chart, to help me pull out um, corresponding colors um, for my page and that is how I am going to color. Now I follow the same process throughout all my planned pages whether I am doing a strawberry inspired um, theme as in one of my Clara Markova books. So here in Magical Delights by Clara Markova I have picked this beautiful page to color in Based on my previous experience working in this book, I know that Prisma colors work really well and are a pleasure to color in. So I have chosen to use Prisma color pencils for this page. I won't be basing it in anything. I don't feel that it, it is necessary, nor am I in the mood to do that with this page. So I know that I want to have the colors red, green, white, and a bit of yellow. So I'm going to have gold instead of yellow. And those are going to be the base of my, um, my page. I also know that there is white on the flowers. There is some um, browns in the gold. So I'm going to incorporate those um, as well. So I will make either um, a note I take a, pay, a note page out of my book or I will use sticky notes as you see here. Once again, I will go for inspiration on, on the internet and I'm going to pull up here a picture of a strawberry plant. Now, as you can see in these strawberries, I need to have a variety of reds, but I don't know how to color strawberries very well. So I am referring to Helen Elliston's coloring special effects um, she's got I've got a couple of her books 
and I'm going to use the colors she suggests for the strawberries. So I'm using pink, yellow, and a, a few shades of reds. But I don't have a tutorial on how to do the leaves or the flowers. So again, I look up at my strawberry picture and I see that the flowers, I need some cream. I need some um, white and other colors, but I can't just use white in my flowers. So again, I go back to my swatch book. I'm looking at my photo of strawberry flowers. I know I need PC91 for cream. I need some golden rod for deeper colors. Some canary yellow just to brighten things up. I also need some apple green, some olive green. And a few other colors for my shadows and that is what I will carry on doing for the leaves and for her skin I come back to my skin tone so I pick skin tone picture ideas as well for that using similar principles and previous experience with skin tone um, I then decide that with gold I need things like um, jasmine light umber, dark brown, black, white and between those colors I can create gold. So I will use those same pencils when I do the gold bits on her wings. I will use the red pencils from the strawberries to do her wings as well and I'm going to use make white pearls so I will add in some pink from the flowers and the strawberries as well as some grays and some white to create beautiful pearls. Um, and the same principle goes on for any of the pages that I do. Um, I find that this helps me to have a very clear idea of what I want the page to look like and how I can go about picking the right pencils for the job. I hope that this has been a helpful tutorial. Um, I hope that it will encourage you and help you to plan your coloring projects as well. If you have any other ideas or ways on how to approach blank coloring pages and color them in please do let me know your process in the comments below i always look forward to hearing from you and enjoy learning with you until next time take care